Based on Colson Whitehead's novel of the same name, Amazon's 10 episode limited series, The Underground Railroad follows Cora, a slave in the Southeastern United States during the 19th century, who makes a bid for freedom from slaveholding Georgia and in turn takes possession of her personhood. I'm Luca Giliberti, contributing writer at Gold Derby, and I am joined today by Aaron Pierre, who stars as Caesar, an enslaved man who decides to escape from the Georgia plantation to which he was sold and convinces Cora to run away with him. So Aaron, you got to work with Barry Jenkins, who directed all 10 episodes of this series. What does a Barry Jenkins set look and feel like? Yeah, that's a great question. Um... Barry creates what I like to describe as a very safe and supportive environment on set. Um, I've said many times, and I'll continue to say, Barry is, to me, the epitome of a leader and a director. Um, our mental, spiritual, and emotional well-being was at the forefront of his mind at all times. Um, and that included not only the cast, but the crew and everybody present and involved in the project. Um, he went as far as to have a guidance counselor on set every day. Um, and again, I've said this many times also, but irrespective of whether you utilize that service or not, um, I think it's just the knowing that there is somebody available, a professional available to help you as of when you find yourself in a particularly dark space and need assistance out of that space and that mind frame. Um, he's incredible. That's amazing. And I'm, I'm not gonna ask you uh, what you learned from him as I assume that's uh, too much to even sum up, but what is the most memorable or the most enriching piece of direction, piece of advice or piece of knowledge that you received from him? Yeah. Um... I can't remember verbatim what he said to me, mm -hmm. but word for word, but he said to me one day when we were on set, I think we were filming uh, episode two, South Carolina. And he just reminded me of the importance of seeking truth when storytelling. And that is something that really resonated with me and something that I hold very dear to me particularly when, um, when storytelling, you know, to, to be as truthful and authentic as possible in order to serve the story. And it really reflected in the work. So that's a great piece of advice. What were some of the thoughts that were going through your head after you got the part of Caesar? And why is it so important to you to tell this story or tell his story? Yeah, I mean, oh man, so... The day, the day that I received the news, um, I had not long moved into my new apartment in London. Mm -hmm. And I was doing sort of some DIY. I was putting up curtain rails. <laughs> um, and the living room had gone really well. My bedroom had gone really well. And the second bedroom was proving difficult for some reason. And I was getting really frustrated and worked up. Um, and <laughs> I actually received the call while that was happening. Um, and that just put everything into perspective for me, you know, <laughs> the, you know, like, it was like <laughs> the curtain rail is not the end of the world. Like, look at this amazing blessing that has been, um, that has been brought to you. Um, and in regards to the second part of your question, um, the importance of telling this story and Caesar's story, um, you know, <sighs> I think not only me, but everybody involved, we all had the same objective. And that objective was to tell this story as truthfully and as authentically as possible to honor those and honor the magnitude of strength that they had to overcome such horrific circumstances against their will. Um, so to honor those who went through it. That's amazing. And we'll talk about that uh, later on. So Caesar was born, uh, was born a slave on a small farm in Virginia owned by a widow uh, who taught her slaves to uh, read and write and it promised Caesar and his parents uh, manumission, but this never really came to fruition and he was sold to a Georgia plantation, the one that we find him at uh, at the beginning of the show. 
it's one thing to not have something you've never had. It's another to have something taken away from you, something taken away from you, from you that was so valuable. Caesar knows what freedom or at least a version of freedom looks like. Was this your entryway into this character? I think, I think for me, there were a number of, um, a number of ways that I accessed what I interpreted to be Caesar. Mm -hmm. uh, but certainly something that is really important is in his journey is, as you just mentioned so articulately, his journey to the point where we, as the audience first meet him, as you said, you know, he was in Virginia and he was promised manumission along with his parents. That didn't come to fruition and his, his family was then torn apart. You know, his mother in one direction, his father in another, and he to Georgia. He, he then finds himself in Georgia on the Randall Plantation. And for me, just this was really important because for me, it just highlighted the magnitude of strength and mental and physical and spiritual resilience that someone has to have in order to endure that and not allow that experience to engulf them entirely. Um, so as, as the actor, as Aaron approaching this character, I approach Caesar with a great admiration and respect. Um, yeah. And uh, to that end, do you think his knowledge or not just his general knowledge, but his knowledge of what is possible, is that what keeps him sane or keeps his sanity intact and really what keeps him continually going? I think that's another great question. I think that what is perhaps one of his motivations to escape the plantation in Georgia is the fact that in Virginia, he has seen glimpses of what he interprets as some form of freedom. And that will never leave somebody once it's witnessed. Um, and also I think he understands that that is everybody's human right to experience freedom. Um, so I think that's certainly one of his motivations. In regards to what keeps him sane, um, I think a number of things contribute to that, but particularly his ability to read. Mm -hmm. I think his ability to read um, allows him to uh, escape his reality and allows him to uh, be, be taken by another space, you know, which is his imagination and where stories and books can take you. Um, I think that gives him relief from what is a horrific reality. And we also get that great line in the second episode when he tells Cora when they're in South Carolina that he's glad to have the chance to maybe use his mind for once. And I think that uh, just speaks to what you just mentioned and it's such a profound moment. And he also tells Cora, this, this is real, that this situation we're in now, it, this is real. Um, and speaking of Cora, um, you share many of your scenes or most of your scenes with Tusu Mbedu, who um, obviously plays Cora, um, talk us through this beautiful relationship between Caesar and Cora and maybe some of the conversations you had with Tuso either before or during the shoot. Yeah, I mean, firstly, I want to say that working with Tuso was an absolute blessing in every sense of the word. She is entirely open, entirely generous, and extraordinarily gifted. Um, I also have to thank Barry uh, for providing the foundation of our working relationship and friendship because uh, something that was really important to Barry was uh, rehearsal, um, particularly at the beginning of the process. Um, and that is where Tuso and I first had our opportunity to connect as individuals and explore the characters and the relationship between the characters. And an extension of that was, you know, us being able to connect as just people, you know, um, yeah. you know, not actors, just connect as people, you know, and um, we, got, we got to share stories, you know, that, you know, of things we'd experienced and share music and just connect on that level. And we then built this friendship uh, and this trust 
that was so valuable in 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 the context of work because it meant that we could we knew that we were supported by one another which is so crucial um when you're telling any story but particularly a story with this subject matter right and i think that really does uh, translate uh, on screen and without spoiling anything perhaps what did it mean to you to be able to do that scene with tuso in the eighth episode and um is it true that it wasn't entirely scripted? I'm speaking about the um, dancing scene in the uh, eighth episode. Yeah, that was, um, filming that scene was one of the most, um, trying to think of the word, but just one, one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had um, and absorbing experiences I've ever had uh, on a film set. Um, not often do you just forget that there are cameras around. And in that moment, when Caesar and Cora finally get to be in contact with one another again and embrace one another, that, that was a moment of real, really being present for me. And um, I just completely forgot the cameras were there and was just present in the character and um that that was a really memorable and incredible day um yeah that day was amazing and it's such an important moment for cora and for her uh, development uh, in this series so don't you think that caesar ultimately actually embodies everything that this show at its core is about, or this story at its core is about, the, the strength, the perseverance, the intelligence, the possession of personhood? I think, for me, I think um, Caesar is one of a number of catalysts um, for Caesar's journey. Um, I think, uh, for, for Cora's journey, so yeah, yeah. I think Caesar is one of the catalysts for Cora's journey. And I think Cora already has um, everything she needs within her in order to pursue uh, that true liberty and freedom that's, that she seeks. I think if anything, Caesar just contributes a small flame to the, to the burning fire that is already within Cora. Um, but it's, but it's, nice to, it's nice to also, um, you know, hear how you received it. And I think, I think if anything, he, he represents Potentially in Cora's journey, he represents uh, possibility and hope. Right. And was there any way of shaking this experience after you were done? Um, I'm assuming it was very difficult considering the parallels and how they they very much exist. Yeah. Um, it was it it was it was challenging. Um, it was very challenging. Um, I, th I think as this is something I've said many times also, you know, I think um, as a global community and as a human race, we have a very, very long way to go in regards to empathy, understanding and unity. And my hope and it feels like this series is definitely contributing to this conversation and is hopefully allowing audiences the space to reflect and ask of themselves what they can do that is conducive to progress. Um, that's my hope. Right. And it, it's also just important to take a look at history. I mean, obviously, the story that is being told uh, in the Underground Railroad is, is fictional, but it's very much grounded. It's rooted in history. It's rooted in reality. And to be able to move toward a better place, we have to be able to acknowledge what has happened and move on from there. If we don't look at history, it's not, the problem won't uh, be solved. So I think that's why this show is so important to see among, for, among other reasons, obviously. So as on a final note, what did you learn or what do you relish most from this entire experience, um, both as an actor and, and just as a human being? I think as, for, you know, I'll, I'll answer the actor part first. I think mm -hmm. as an actor, um, I, just, I just really think that I had the opportunity to work with 
just phenomenal people all across the board. Um, Barry is a genius. Um, Colson is a genius. You know, for these two people to come together and put their genius in one space is such a gift. Um, you know, I got to work with the gifts that are Tuso and Sheila and, you know, Joel and William and Chase, I, everybody, you know, and all of the crew, you know, I, everybody involved with this project contributed so much and gave so much. Um, and I learned so much from everyone. And, and just as me, as Aaron, um, it's hard to, it's hard to describe it, you know, with one word perhaps, but um, I think it just really broadened my knowledge, um, broadened my understanding and allowed me an opportunity to reflect um, on the importance of looking after myself as a young black man um, in the world that we live in today. Wow, thank you so much, Aaron, for uh, joining us today. It was a pleasure. To our viewers and listeners, make sure to go to goldderby.com to make your predictions. And before you go, click subscribe uh, to watch all of our great chats with top contenders. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.